I want you to imagine right now, April the 12th of 1861. We all know what that day was, the firing of Fort Sumter. On that day, we have the transatlantic <coughs> shipping. We have ships, this is France as an example, we have ships coming from France to America laden with China from Limoges, perfume from Aix, silk from Lyon, leather goods, fancy goods, all these wonderful yeah, things water. for the North American market. <laughs> We've got to afford it, buying off Fort Sumter, and all of a sudden that market stops. We don't need perfumes, do we? We need car fumes, maybe. Well, no, we don't have cars in those days. We need uh, uh, gun fumes, maybe. Not perfumes. So, uh, immediately, England and France was plunged into a, night, a, 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 uh, a depression, almost. Because the whole market of fancy goods from North America, uh, to North America was cancelled. Audibles were cancelled. Hundreds of thousands of people were out of work because the markets collapsed. So the implications of the American Civil War were severe. Using statistics, at the start of the Civil War, there were at the most, I would say, 160,000 weapons in the South, men of them were old weapons. There was no army, no navy, no uniforms, no money. And I would like to suggest, Mr. President, there really wasn't a plan either, and I'll be discussing that. <laughs> during the four years, well, during the Civil War, 60% of the firearms from the South came from England. Like yes, like that. Marvellous. Marvellous, thank you. The British Enfield. It's not even EU, it's British. We don't want the EU, do we? Oh, well, that's a different subject. <laughs> Brexit. So, and what about the, uh, the Whitworth? Rifle, or the field gun, marvellous gun, breech loading, tremendous. These 60% six, of the firearms came from, from England. You need to manufacture gunpowder, you need saltpeter. 60% of the saltpeter came from England. 40% of the lead came from England. So immediately the Civil War was both European and American at the same time far, far reaching. Now, I'm going to go back to the first Confederate Congress, which was about February, uh, Chattanooga, Tennessee, when you, Mr. President, President uh, uh, Jefferson Davis, was made president, and a speech that was given at that first Confederate Congress. And I'm going to make a statement that I believe that the American Civil War basically failed at the first Confederate Congress although it was for some time on April the 12th of 1861 that the war was officially started, but I believe it was failed from the get-go and that the South was fighting a war that really they could not win. And there's a reason for this. Hammond gave a speech in the Senate in 1858 when he says, you dare not make war on the South, the South has cotton. Cotton is king. Make war in the South and you'll plunge your nation into destitute and depression, etc. In other words, cotton is the bargaining tool. Cotton is the leverage that you need, for example, to get sovereign status for the South and to get weapons. So cotton was used throughout the Civil War as a bargaining tool. It started with the embargo of the cotton, the setting fire to the cotton and then the cotton bond of 1862 which we'll discuss. Cotton sounds like a tremendous leverage to start a war. I mean if you're in England and you've got the Industrial Revolution, you've got mills employing hundreds of thousands of people and they're all using cotton, isn't it a marvellous tool? You don't have your cotton if you don't give us what we want, you don't get your cotton you're in a recession, you're in a financial downturn, it's a marvellous uh, tool. But I would suggest there were several reasons it failed. The first one is that Jefferson Davis, you sir, was Secretary of War under the Pierce administration in 1856 
and your Tumbo office ended in 1857. Is that not correct, sir? With you, there was William Marcy, the Secretary of State, who was also there in 1856, and his Tumbo office ended in 1857. In England, after the Crimean War, seven states got together to put together a maritime law called the 1856 Declaration of Paris. 1856, when President Jefferson Davis was then Secretary of War. To say that President Davis was not aware of the Declaration of Paris is like eating a hamburger and saying you're not wearing Big Macs. It's, it's, you know, you so would have been aware of it. The Declaration of Paris has four maritime clauses. Clause number one, piracy on the high seas is forbidden. Clause number two and number three dealt with mutual and enemy ships and contraband goods. And clause number four said that blockades need to be effective. What the effective was, no one really understood whether you have a ship that's circling the harbour, preventing ships going out, or whether you actually have forces on the harbour itself, it wasn't defined, but blockades had to be effective. No paper blockades. So guess what? President Jefferson Davis initiated on February the first, uh, first uh, Confederate Congress of Chattanooga, Tennessee, the King Cotton campaign in the face that, well, a bit later we have the embargo, uh, the uh, blockade, the Anaconda Plan imposed by you, sir, uh, President Lincoln. Is that not so? You opposed the Anaconda Plan. May I ask you, do you remember the date for that? I don't remember the exact date, I'm sorry. But your secretary would know if she's... Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, donation of the I'll translate that a little bit. Uh, basically, I'm just basically saying that we're here and we're in a camp, and um, this is a reenactment of the you know civil war. That it is very important that you know we keep the history, and it's important so that you know all the younger generations can understand how important history is for you know all mankind. And I'm over here, and I like to have a little bit of opinion about what's going on here, and, and can you share a little bit about more what's you know uh, it's happening here today? Sure, be happy to. So, this is a, an annual event here in Kearney Park. And so uh, volunteer reenactors from all over California come uh, and participate. And many of the volunteer reenactors uh, are part of uh, groups that are on the northern side, the federal side. Many are on the southern side or the Confederate side. And, um, and so we get together for that very purpose, to remember, um, remember our history and the things that our forefathers cared so much about. And can you tell us your name? My name's Mike, Mike Cox. Okay, and you're from this area? 
I am. Uh, my family lives up in Oakhurst. Oh, okay. Sounds great. Um, so has it been fun? Oh, we, we really love it. So I'm out here with um, my four older children, mm -hmm. and uh, we're all part of the, the third confederate mm -hmm. is our unit. Okay. And we are a number of other families that we're friends with participate in this. Mm -hmm. And uh, so my daughters come out and they act as nurses. Mm -hmm. And then my two older sons are in our unit together, and we go out there and, and reenact the battle together. Oh, that's great. We saw the, uh, the battle. We filmed that, and then you guys did a great job. Oh. That was very, very good. And, you know, to us, it's really important about history. History is, you know, have to be kept by all the younger generations. Um, how long have your families been doing this? Uh, our family, this is the second year for us. Okay. Okay. Um, other, some, there's people here that are reenacting that have been doing it for 25 years. They just keep coming back, and all these people are longtime friends mm -hmm. um, that have been doing this for so long. But it's good, as you say, with remembering history, to bring in the younger generation mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. be able to enter into that and learn as well. Yeah. Now, what about uniforms? You guys do all your own uniforms? We do, and that's actually probably one of the the good things about being on the Southern Confederate side is that historically they were much more ragtag okay. and they kind of had to make do with what they had more than the, than the, uh, the Northern Army. So we, we get our own uniforms and put together what we can, but if we look a little bit uh, war-worn war and tattered, that's, that's appropriate. Okay. Yeah. What about the kids? Do you think they have fun? Oh, I know they love it. They they have a great time. <laughs> they absolutely do. There's so much to do out here during the day, and they, our, my kids grew up reenacting just in the front yard, play fighting with sticks and things. And so to come out and do this with adults who are serious about it is really fun. Okay, I understand too that because the camp is set up here, um, you guys going to be spending the night. Yes, uh, we spent the night last night as well, and many will be spending the night tonight as well because there's more reenacting tomorrow. Okay, yeah, so it's just basically Saturday and Sunday, but you guys come out on Friday, spend the night, spend Saturday night, and then tomorrow after the, uh, I guess, the last um, show or the last event, then you guys can pack up and go back. Yes. Okay. Yes. Well, do you girls and guys, little boys and girls, you guys have fun? Would you like to say a little bit and introduce your name to us? Just say hi, my name is... Hi, I'm Olivia. Oh. Hi, my name's Brendan. I'm Jalen. This is our Sergeant Parrish. Uh -huh. I'm Scott. Oh. <laughs> Sergeant Parrish. That's right. Sergeant. He's our okay. officer. Okay. And let us pass this to the uh, young girl over here. She's got the perfect little outfit. We talked a little bit about her dress, and we love it. Can you show a little bit? I'm Rebecca Thiessen. We... We sewed the dress ourselves. It, it has a, a hoop skirt, as period as we can make it, except with the wrong materials, because we use, we use duct tape and <laughs> And zip ties. <laughs> okay, but tell them how perfectly I mean, the dress came on so perfectly and see how you sit down and just perfect. <laughs> so the zip tie works great. <laughs> it's as like whalebone as possible. Does somebody help you with that, Rebecca? Yes. My grandmother and my mother and I did it. Serena, can you tell them who you are and say thank you for, you know, letting everybody um, be part of this, you know, show? Can you just kind of thank everybody? Hi, I'm Serena. I came here today to do a bit of research for a extra credit for my history class. And so far I've been really enjoying all the efforts of these people here. I've been appreciating all like how people have been making their costumes. Like I'm very amazed and impressed at all of this. And I'm pretty excited to start writing that report. Oh, good. Okay. So good. thank you for your time. Thank you for your time. Thank I'll be you. here for a couple hours more.
Well, thank you so much. What you are on Elushi Hau, la mo gong da pei nam hong ye say TV thei kun jin la cha nam hong ye say TV. Okay, so she had a neck on the good hand, the Mongols ATV, and a bell on the shower union, the Gushana, yes, Rina, the Gushana, yeah, or it's in a mechanic, Lumbe, who Anthony now, Lotua, one and all, no, no, or Hossetting, the Besha had taught your kinku, or she taught her old or civil war. Shano, the Yasha, he did, and all low jaw, or Taha, not to do, how put up a jolly name of my Lashan, the Yasha, your Taha, let your best something, the sir, not yet, let you not get to do, that she jolly lamu, or high up a little donate, then don't hear. Serena, can you uh, share or ask him a little bit of questions or just introduce yourself a little bit? And we can pass the mic to you. I'm Serena. I'm here for a extra credit project for my school, for my history class. And I've been really enjoying all of the events around here. I've been very impressed on all the efforts of the people to putting into the costumes, into the enactments, and into helping out each other. And yeah, I'm really thankful for coming out today. Okay, so you want to thank him for his time? Yes, I do. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. That's very nice of you. Mm -hmm. Okay, can you, um, we'll give you, we're going to give you the mic and then share, you know, what your experience is, um, what's going on here, and then that way the people at home they can kind of understand what the event is all about and, and all the volunteers and time and and you know just just your experience alone. Okay. Well, I, I represent the uh, um, a first sergeant in the Second Wisconsin Volunteer Infantry, mm -hmm. which is a real regiment during the Civil War, and uh, <clears throat> we're proud of our regiment. We're has a very good history. It has a very brave men fought at Gettysburg, and in fact lost a lot of them at Gettysburg. So we're proud to represent them. I enjoy spending the time with my friends here mm -hmm. and learning about history and learning about <clears throat> all the things they had to go through. So all this is just volunteer work? Oh, absolutely. Yes. This okay. we we uh, we do this at a, every. I mean, a, a variety of other places mm -hmm. in Northern California. And How many people do you think that's in the, the group for for your side? For our Canada? side, I think uh, today we have close to a hundred. Okay. Which is which is pretty good, okay. pretty big. Okay. How do you feel about the reenactment? The reenactment. I mean, the battles on the field. Yes. Yes. Well, they're exciting. <laughs> and uh, you never know what's going to happen. Uh -huh. You don't know who's going to win. Uh -huh. And you just see how it evolves. Uh -huh. And you try to do some tactics, uh -huh. some real tactics of the day, and then have fun, and it's over. Uh -huh. What about your uniforms? Do you guys <clears throat> do your own uniforms? Uh, no, we purchase them. Some people are, are very good and may, may make those, but they are uh -huh. authentic. Uh, they're made of wool, uh -huh. and uh, they follow a certain... Um, pattern of the day mm -hmm. and we actually have a our uniform is a, a dress uniform you see it's uh -huh. goes all the way down here uh -huh. and we have uh, these special gaiters uh -huh. this used to be known as the uh, dress uniform of, of the of the army normal soldiers would wear the short short uh, okay. jackets okay. but our particular <coughs> commander wanted us to look good have a speed mm -hmm. of core mm -hmm. so he said well you guys have to wear your dress uniforms at all the battles and all the time no? okay. so that's okay. why we looked a little bit different we also have the black hats uh -huh. and our regiment was part of the iron brigade and they were <coughs> also got to be known as the black hats mm -hmm. so. okay you having fun so far? Absolutely. Okay. Well, we are having so much fun uh, watching the, the battles and, and uh -huh. getting to, you know, uh, learn about history and then uh, teaching and hopefully filming all this so that the younger generations can understand how important it is on the Civil War and the history of it. Yeah. Very good. So it's That's commendable. Thank you. Yes. So you guys are the one that's doing all the hard work and you guys are the one that... Well, we're the ones having the fun. <laughs> Put it that way. <laughs> yeah, but thank you okay. so much for your time and Oh, effort. sure. You're okay. welcome. Okay, thank you. Now, what's your name? I'm going to pay in the Mongolia TV. Now, when Gina Cha. This, you know, we're covering it so that way people can see that there's so many things that's going on. Mm -hmm. Anything that relates to history, uh, preservation of history, cultures, anything like that. We try to cover all of that. Uh -huh. You know, oh, very good. Because that's really important. Great. That's so, great. We, we came out and said, go ahead. Uh -huh. Uh, let me get something. I'll be right, be right back. Uh -huh. Here, hold on. I have a question. Yes. She was Jack from 2018. You want to stand in front of the White House? In front of the flag? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, this is a perfect picture. No, no, 
ไปจอนในตัวยีเทียตัวกล่องตอนนู้นเนาะก็ในปอเตาให้เตียแก้งกึกเนาะหนูม่วงกี้ชิไฮโดยจอมม่งติงกับมุดโดยจอมเมกา